One uh, Arsenal fan who is saying that uh, Wenger needs to be replaced is Piers Morgan, who's uh, with us on the show. How are you doing, Piers? I'm very well, thank you. Um, yeah, well, just a very quick time scale. When did you uh, change and, and when did you start to want Wenger out? I actually wrote a piece for the Man on Sunday about um, three years ago saying that it was after we'd lost 3-0 away to Manchester City and I thought the way we played and the kind of squad that we had, it just looked to me like we weren't being competitive anymore and that we were being left behind. And I wrote a piece and then I regretted it because Arsenal fans went crazy and I thought, God, maybe I am just being disloyal to the guy. You know, he's done such an amazing job for us. And that's, that's the difficult dilemma for all Arsenal fans. You're a guy that won the double twice, gave us the invincible for seven or eight years, was the best manager in the world, bar none. And you have to give the man huge credit and, and gratitude for that. But it's been eight years since we won anything. And, and worse than that, we're getting worse. I mean, there's no question this squad, I think, is about the weakest he's had in the whole tenure at Arsenal. And we've made the worst start to the Premier League uh, in 30 years, never mind just under Wenger. And already we're out of the Premier League, in my view. We're unlikely to go very far in the Champions League. We may win the League Cup, but when was Arsenal about winning the League Cup? And although it's difficult for Arsenal fans to comprehend life without Wenger, there's got to be a point when you say at any other big club, would a manager with this record of the last eight years and with the current squad performing in the way they are, would that manager still be there? And I think the honest answer is no, he wouldn't. Hi, Piers Goffey. Um... One one thing, Piers, is what, what seem a lot of his uh, pro Wenger fans are coming on here and saying is, but it's not Wenger's fault. He's he's hiding uh, the border, hiding behind Wenger. Now I can't get my head around that because if I'd have been successful and as rich as Arsene Wenger, and I wasn't getting what I wanted, I'd be offsky. Well, hang on. Let's just get things in perspective here. Arsene Wenger's his own man. Why did Robin van Persie, our best player? get sold to Manchester United. Alex Ferguson called Wenger personally and persuaded him. When I read that, I thought Wenger has lost the plot. Wenger is now letting Alex Ferguson ring him and steal our best football player. What was that going to do? It was going to weaken us, which it has dramatically, and it was going to strengthen Manchester United, who are currently top of the league, and now have the two best strikers, arguably, in Europe playing together. Uh, how does that help anybody? And the fact that Wenger was party to that, that wasn't a call to Ivan Gazidis. It was Ferguson to Wenger. None of these players that we've signed in the last two years have been signed without Wenger's approval. These are, these are his players and his squad. And no Arsenal fan can tell me, however much they love the guy, that he is the same manager he was eight years ago. He's not as competitive. You know, the old Arsene Wenger would never have tried to say that uh, qualifying for the Champions League year in, year out was like winning a trophy. He just wouldn't have said that. He wouldn't have phrased it in that way. To me, that was a huge insult to all Arsenal fans. If what we've become now is a team that's comfortable coming forth, as long as we play a bit of pretty European football for a few rounds and then get kicked out, that's, that's not what being at Arsenal's about. And that's not the mentality that took Wenger to the great heights of the two double-winning teams in the Invincibles. And, you know, I do understand why Arsenal fans feel so compromised. But at the same time, I can tell from the reaction of the crowds at Arsenal in the last few weeks that the tide is turning and they're beginning to see that, you know, the unthinkable may have to be the way forward for this club. Um, you have on Twitter, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've highlighted some possible replacements. Yeah, am I right in saying one of those you suggested was Harry Redknapp? Well, I gave a few options. I mean, my preferred choice right now would be Guardiola, who is out of work and is a brilliant manager. I think uh, Jürgen Klopp at Dortmund's a great manager, but we could get him. I think we'd have a better chance of getting him than Hanks at Bayern, who I think he's also outstanding. I'd love to get Marina, but we're not going to get him. You've got to be realistic about who you're actually going to get. And I cited of the three British managers that could be options. David Moyes has done a terrific job. I've always been a fan of Martin O'Neill. And actually, I think Harry Redknapp did a very, very good job at Tottenham uh, and took them into the Champions League. We could do a lot worse than just a bit of fresh something. You know, and Harry would get them all going, and he'd probably promote a few more British players. You know, I, I thought we should have signed Cahill at the back. I couldn't understand. Like, we were in for him, apparently, for £6 million. Why would we not sign a brilliant player like him? Um, so, you know, I just think you look at the transfer business we've done. We get rid of Van Persie, one of the best strikers in the world, and we replace him with not as good players. You know, Giroud is quite promising. 
Podolsky's okay, but these aren't as good as Van Persie. You know, we haven't replaced Fabregas. We lost two club captains in two years. Uh, you can't continue to just sell all your best players and expect to compete at the highest level. And we're not competing. You know, wakey, wakey, Arsenal fans. We are slipping away into mid-table mediocrity. And some of them may want to put up with that. And some of them may think Wenger should have a job for life. There's no job for life. You know, this isn't. He had a great run. He did eight brilliant years and eight not-so-good years. And we're getting worse. Now is the time to take action. And, you know, I also blame uh, Gazidis on the board, who I think has been an absolute disaster. You know, he, he just thinks it's perfectly good policy, uh, year in, year out, to sell all our best players to rival teams. And I think it's a scandal. Uh, and at the same time, he wants to charge the highest price season ticket uh, prices. And Wenger's the highest paid, paid manager. He gets paid more than Ferguson. How can you possibly justify paying Arsene Wenger more than Ferguson? And when Arsenal fans say he's as good as Ferguson, I say he's not. Because if he was, he would be competing with Ferguson. We have the money. We have the money. But rather than competing, we're giving Ferguson our best players. We haven't sold a player to United in 26 years. What were we thinking? Giving them Robin Van Persie, the best striker that we've had for, since Thierry Henry. It just seemed to me utter madness. Ferguson has been able to reinvent himself time and again, and he still has that absolute burning desire to win. And here's the difference. If Arsene Wenger had called up Alex Ferguson and said, I want to buy Wayne Rooney, how long would that conversation have lasted? <laughs> Three seconds, long enough to include the word off. And I want a manager to do that when somebody rings us and asks to buy our best player. I tell you what, Piers, one of the biggest criticisms for me, though, in all this, and it must, this is what really must get to you about Robin Van Perstrings and, <laughs> and Ivan the Terrible, whatever you call them. I mean, with Walcott, I mean, we've seen it now with Walcott where the contracts are running down. We saw it with Nasri, contract running down. RVP, contract running down. What is it about Arsenal not being able to sort out the contracts before they get down to the last year? Arsenal, Arsenal haven't won a single thing since David Dean left the building. David Dean was a brilliant ma managerial figure at the club. You know, he and uh, I liken him and Wenger to uh, to Lennon and McCartney. You know, they made brilliant music together, and when they fell apart, uh, it, it all just went horribly wrong. Because David Dean would get stuff done. One of the criticisms I hear about Wenger a lot now from people uh, connected to the club is he never makes a decision. You now we could have signed Mata. Apparently, we could have signed Hazard. We definitely should have signed Cahill. You know, we've got one goalkeeper of any uh, of any standard. And we've had to play Manoni, who's fairly clueless. You know, he's done OK, but he's never going to be a top-draw goalkeeper. We saw that against Fulham. You know, letting in a header from the edge of the box. This is the kind of goalkeeper that we need as a club that had Seaman and Bob Wilson and Pat Jennings. You know, um, it's not so much that we got beaten by United or Chelsea. I expected us to lose those games this year. We're not in their league in terms of the power of our squad. But we drew with Sunderland. You know, we lost to Norwich. We drew with Stoke. We got thrashed at home by Schalke. We dropped a two-goal lead away to Schalke. We only just beat Queen's Park Rangers when they had a last-minute sending off. We were losing 4-0 to Reading in the League Cup. You know, this is what is appalling me. This is not the Arsenal of Wenger's great years. It's nowhere near it. And it's been going this way now for six or seven years, and too many Arsenal fans, in my view, are just not prepared to accept reality. They still think they've got the Wenger of old. When they chant, we want our Arsenal back, as they're now doing at games, I want them to chant, we want our Arsene back, the great manager that brought us the glory. But that guy has gone. He's not what he was. And until we change the board and get a David Dean figure, you know, I would love David Dean back at Arsenal. And if David Dean came back tomorrow, I'd say give Wenger another couple of years to try and work it out with David Dean. But without that kind of figure there, and with Ivan Gazidis, whose only interest is working out who our two best players are each summer and selling them for the highest price. Until we change that mentality, until we change the mentality of a board that thinks it's okay to come forth because that's winning a trophy, until that changes, we're going nowhere. Do you support the Arsenal fans are having a protest uh, ahead of the Swansea game at home on December the 1st, protesting against the board? Do you support that protest? 
I do. And by the way, I fully respect all Arsenal fans that don't agree with me. I get that this Wenger thing is unbelievably difficult. I think it's, you know, it's, it's like a divorce. And you're talking about divorcing someone that we've all loved for a very long time. And I have enormous personal respect and regard for Arsene Wenger. Whenever I've met him personally, he's been utterly charming. He's a, he's a great man in many ways. And he's been one of the great managers, arguably our greatest ever manager. But it doesn't mean you get a job for life. And, of course, Arsenal fans should be allowed to protest. Of course, they should be able to have a view. I thought the recent AGM was a total disgrace. Peter Hillwood, the chairman, talking about it being their club, not the fans. This is the fans' club. You know, regardless of how badly we play, we could be relegated. I still support Arsenal. It's not about not wanting to support the club, but I support the club first, as I'm sure most proper Arsenal fans do. And I do not support what is going on at this club. We have become a selling club and a club that thinks coming forth is good enough. And it's got to stop. You know, we got Spurs on Saturday. Normally a game I used to love looking forward to because we used to always take them down. I've got very little confidence we're going to beat them. And yeah. if we were to lose, then I could imagine that the protests will get very loud indeed. Yeah. Um, something's going to change. And it, I, you know, it may as well fall to people like me that have a bit of a voice on Twitter to create a debate, and like I say, I fully respect the Arsenal fans that don't agree with me, but they've got to come up with a very, very good reason why we should continue to tolerate failure and a losing, selling club mentality. How thick-skinned are you about criticism? I find it a complete disgrace. What are the particular things you hate reading? Especially Van Persie. Is he honest with you, Percy? Not at all. How important is it to you to be popular? I have not a lot to say about that. I like to win. We are... Uh, capable to come back into the top four. I like to win. No, it's not like that. Do you think that you will end it before other people call for you to end it? <laughs>